So um, what we're trying to do here with our first uh, class is to two things. One is we heard from uh, many people that um, they didn't know what to do when they went out on a boat and uh, didn't really know where to go and enjoy themselves. And secondly, we've had a recent conversation regarding um, no-go zones. So we wanted to clear that up and get some communications and find out if these Zoom classes actually work. And our goal is to uh, do multiple um, Zoom classes throughout the season, probably every other week, and uh, focus on topics that uh, everybody as a member would be interested in. So uh, let's just kind of move on down here. First thing I want to go over is the concept of a no-go zone. Uh, we set this up last year. We tested it out in Westport and uh, found that we were able to cut the damage to the lower units down by 100%. Uh, we probably had 15 lower units lost in the uh, Kikini Island area. And once we put a five boats on with uh, GPS trackers and no-go zones, it was, it was gone. So it was very effective. Uh, what does that mean to you folks? It means that more boats are floating in the water and available for use. At one point in Westport, we had seven boats out of 10 out of service because of uh, lower damage. So what is a no-go zone? A no-go zone in our mind is a area that we do not want you to trans transgress. We don't want you to go through it. Um, right, this chart right here is a, a picture of um, off of Milford Harbor, Charles Island right here. And this is a peninsula to the shoreline. I'd say it's approximately a half a mile long. So if you're coming out at high tide out of the harbor or you're entering from Long Island Sound to go into the harbor and it's above low tide, say high tide, this looks perfectly fine to go over. We've lost uh, a few lower units over here where people go across. And just as a reminder, this green area here is land at high tide, excuse me, at low tide. And these black little stars are rocks. So a no-go zone to us means that you can come up and approach the area, drop anchor in five feet of water, or greater and enjoy the area. We just don't want you going across because this has caused us all lots of damage and headaches. So that's number one no go zone. What we're also going to do is the boats will be uh, marked with uh, GPS trackers and this no go zone will actually be electronic and uh, an alarm will go off on the boat to hopefully give you notice to turn around and, and get out before you run into too much problems. And as a footnote to all that, it's not people intentionally going across here. Normally, it's people who are just thinking about something else and not paying all that much attention. So hopefully, these uh, alarms and no-go zone areas will be helpful to us all. So let's talk a little bit about our um, goal here today. Um, we're going to plan a trip. And we're going to plan a trip to a no-go zone area, Kikini Island. And we're going to be using a bunch of reference materials. Um, we've offered the embassy cruising guides out for sale in the past. We've given them away. Uh, this is a great reference tool for people to use uh, to plan a trip, especially the places they don't know. And uh, we'll go into some specifics about that and obviously where to get them afterwards. Um, we're gonna chart a course electronically. Uh, since we're, I'm on the web here, I'm not using um, app applications from my iPhone. So we're gonna be using um, Navionics online, it's a little bit squirrely, jumps around, so I hopefully I don't get you too seasick. But you can chart your course on Navionics, either on your laptop, your um, phone or iPad. You can go to the boat and uh, use the Garmin systems or the Simrad systems, and we'll go over those at another time. So once you figure out where you wanna go, um, we're gonna wanna do things like check the weather and check tides. So what I use on my, um, phone and uh, iPad is I'm, I'm really kind of addicted to storm radar, primarily because it's bright and it also does a forward looking radar that predicts which way storms, rain are, are going. Some people like using the NOAA app. Weather Underground is another strong one. Um, most of these are free. Uh, tonight, I believe we're gonna be using the Weather Channel, which is somewhat interactive, but not as uh, I think strong as the apps you get on your phone. Then for looking at tides, uh, this is a free app, Tides, get, get it online, and uh, it's interactive, which is nice. It tells you direction times for high and low tide. And lastly, I use WindFinder. This is really for uh, kite borders and surfboarders, and uh, it's for, it'll tell you the wind speeds for location, so if you're worried about it getting too choppy out there, 
obviously wind and uh, waves are correlated. So if it's going to get to over 10 knots, 15, 20 knots, you're going to have more of a bumpy ride as time goes on. And lastly, we'll go into a float plan and talk about what it is and um, how to use one. So the Embassy Guide is a book that's published, uh, I believe, up here in uh, Massachusetts or Rhode Island. Um, it really tells you, it's a, it's a, it gives you information from Long Island Sound down to Cape May, New Jersey. You just basically go in and find the town you want to go to, and it will give you all sorts of information, such as local information regarding uh, the channels, marinas, things to see and do, restaurants, anchorage areas, tides and current information, um, pictures, charts. And uh, let me actually just kind of zoom out of here for a second. And hey, Mitch, Mitch, it's Mike Rogan. Is there an app for the Long Island Sound Embassy Guide? Actually, there is. You can get this thing on, um, you can get a, go in there and you can download it onto your iPhone. OK, um, cool. I'm, I'm of old school. I like having something in hand to look at, but I haven't tried the electronic one. Oops. So if Westport is our place that we're going to leave from, our departure area, and we want to go to Kikini Island, I would go to the embassy guide. And you're going to get a uh, typical NOAA chart. Um, we're up here, this is 95 bridge, and this is the uh, metal bridge. Our location dock is right there. And we're gonna cruise out of uh, Slogatuck River through the flats, and we're gonna end up over here at Kikini Island. And here it is picturing um, the, the NOAA chart. The next page, it will give you an aerial view of Kikini Island and the Kikini Shoal. It'll talk about the town of Westport, uh, some history on it. And down here, um, actually, let me back up one more second. These little markers here, one, two, three, four, will tell you uh, where the marinas and uh, yacht clubs are, and they are located on this chart here. So um, the biggest marina in Westport is Campo Beach, which is known as Ned Dimes Marina. And uh, that's number four on the chart. And you can read across here. So if you're actually planning a trip say from Long Island to Westport in reverse, and you wanted to know if you can get a slip at Compo, you can call them up. You see they accept transient boats, transient meaning that people can go in for a couple hours or all day or overnight and just pay a fee, and they'll have slips for you. And more importantly, do they have gas for your boat to refuel back up and go back out? So great reference point to uh, find out where to go and actually have a place to dock your boat. Again, it goes on a um, few pages, talks about things to see and do, also lists restaurants, and then a little local lore on what to watch out for when you're going through uh, Westport. And obviously, Kikini Island, Kikini Reef, Kikini Shoal, they talk all about the problems here, the, the rocks, et cetera. And lastly, they will have a aerial view and more continuation of narrative of what Westport's all about. This is the Saugatuck River. This is headed south. I believe this is uh, Route 1 down here, and that's the I-95 bridge, and our club is right down just north of the 95 bridge. Any questions on the embassy guide? Um, we, you can go online and buy these at uh, Walmart, Amazon. Um, Mary Beth's working to set up a uh, company store for this year, club store. And we're gonna to try to figure out how to get these things to you at uh, a lower price than uh, you can buy on the, these locations. Okay, next uh, we wanna jump over to um, the weather and let's start planning a trip. Excuse me. Trying to drag this over so you can see it. Let me refresh it. Um, this is the Weather Channel. Everybody able to see the uh, what I got here with the Weather, weather Channel? Yes. Okay, great. So I have this set up for Stanford. It's the closest Weather Channel station for Westport. Um, you'll right up here. You'll get a pop up talking about um, some current advisory. So right now we have a small craft advisory in the Stanford area. Uh, you can read more details on it, but if you were, if this was a warning and the, that popped up, the club would probably be closed that day. 
So let me uh, exit out of there. Uh, you'll get a chart in the background. The goal here is not only to look at your window before you depart and see what the weather looks like, it's also to get a forecast of what's going on. Um, granted, it is the middle of, beginning of February, and uh, we're not going to see a lot of snow, but in the background, you can see that. Let me hide this. Not hiding. There we go. So you can see on the, up here, this is snow moving across the state of Connecticut. So you got some rain south of Long Island. So if you're going to depart right now out of um, Stanford area, it looks like there's some cold but uh, clear weather for you. Summertime, just be prepared that most of our weather moves from west to east. It comes in over New York, comes up to uh, Connecticut, Long Island, and a lot of time it splits. One storm heads north, one head storm heads south, and you could be fine out the middle of Long Island. Um, but our dock masters will be monitoring this. They will get hold of you if they see something approaching uh, for people who are out on the boat. What we do find is, as a heads up to you folks, is to keep your phones on. A lot of times you take your phones, you stow them away in the back, <laughs> and we can't get hold of you. Um, that's fine, but uh, if you want us to be able to reach out to you, then keep your phone on. Okay, after this, um, next thing to work look at would be the tides. Uh, again, I would use my app more so than I would use this, but uh, here we have the, Start of the, uh, Zoom, the carefree Zoom call if you're interested. Here we have the um, oh, tide chart of the Saugatuck River. For those who are not really familiar with this, it shows you the direction and range of the tide. So this morning at um, that number is uh, 9.33 in the morning, it was dead low. We were 0.4 feet under a typical low tide. And as six hours went by, we had high tide here at um, 328 this afternoon. This green line designates the current time. So the intersection will tell you where your tide is uh, relative to low. So if you came across here about three feet above low tide. So if you were to go to Kikini Island right now and um, you plan on getting close to shore, you're going to potentially be in that position here where you're going to end up at low tide and you're going to have to wait three plus hours to get out. Um, we had one of our members, I hopefully he's on, on the phone call, who uh, was kind enough to submit a picture of what happens to Cherry Garcia when you're not watching the tide. So obviously they, they dropped anchor. Um, I believe it was around Bridgeport. Tides went out and the boat was beached. Obviously not intentionally. Mitch, Mitch that's on uh, Long Island. That's Long Island? <laughs> okay. I think I recognize that boat. I hope so. <laughs> okay, so um, let's move on to uh, Navionics. First of all, any questions on these charts? Okay. I lost my uh, Navionics. There it is. <clears throat> so um, this is uh, Navionics. Um, I actually love this app. For Fifteen dollars. Um, it's is equal to our five thousand dollars systems we have on the boats. It's uh, also not too long ago Navionics was purchased by Garmin. So they're going to be uh, more and more um, uh, work together better than they are today. So, oops, this is where I'm going to get you dizzy. I'm sorry. This. It's going to jump around. So right here we have Westport. Um, this is the Saugatuck River coming down. This is the train tracks. Our dock is right up there. You're going to come out and around through the channel, the flats, out into this area. And you want to go to Kikini Island. Uh, club rules, as we mentioned, we want you to stay in five feet, mean low water or greater. These numbers out there um, are mean low water sound. So obviously out here, anything white is nice and deep. As you get closer in, we want everybody to stay out of here, no matter what the tide level is, because you just never know where these rocks are. These soundings are taken a long time ago. Um, things have shoaled up over the years, and you really don't know what's in between this number one and this number two. There could be a five foot rock there. Uh, 
um, that's not marked. But anyhow, we decided that we wanted to go to Kikini and because people like going there. So let's create a route. <laughs> the easiest way to do it is to um, go up to our starting point. I'll zoom in a little bit more. And our starting point is right up here. We'll go right there. So what you do is you go down the route. Come on, there it is. And we're gonna go automatic. This, with an automatic, you just need to have your starting point and ending point, the computer will create the route for you. So we're just gonna go up there. We're gonna, I'm on a Mac, so I'm just gonna touch the uh, finger pad once. And it'll create a, depending on if you're colorblind or not, that's a magenta or pink starting point. And then we're gonna scroll down to where we wanna end up. And we decided we wanna get close to land and wanna be able to paddle in or walk in. So there's eight feet of water right there. So let's just drop our anchor right there, we'll click it. This dotted magenta line is the computer thinking, designing a course based on um, the settings we put into the computer. You're around. And let me zoom out and you'll see that I've said in here that our depth, minimum depth we want is five feet into the settings and it's created a route all the way around, out and about, and up to Kikini Island. So no cutting that corner. No, good, good suggestion. <laughs> now what you want to do. Um, sorry, Mitch, I don't want to uh, interrupt you. I just want to ask you, are all those numbers, those one, twos, but are those rocks? Is that what those numbers are? In this area here? Yeah. Okay, those are depths in feet. So one and two, it means it's at low tide. It is uh, one feet deep. So our boats carry a draft of three feet. So you're just not gonna be able to get through that at low tide. A lot of people think that this is a great area to come through at high tide and get a quicker run over to Norwalk, to shoot through here, get in the white water and come over here to the Norwalk Islands. Our point is history tells us that's not a good thing um, because of the damages. Again, you don't know what's in between these numbers, but if you wanna see rocks, I've got lots of examples, these red stars, or black stars are rocks. Um, sometimes they're the bigger rocks are given names like Hanford Rock. And over here you have uh, Seymour Rock right there. Am I answering your question? Okay, yeah, I guess that was a silly question. So that the numbers are the depth and the rocks are the, the like those- Those stars. Mm -hmm. And some, you know, sometimes it's over here, it's called foul, which means there's lots of rocks, small rocks, big rocks. They have a lot of different designations. Um, here we have rocks surrounded by little rocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if you're, if you're just out in the Long Island Sound, like deep out farther, you don't have to worry about the rocks. It's rocks are more close to the shoreline. Um, little, mostly true, not always. Uh, out toward where I live on the um, eastern side of Long Island Sound, um, we have Long Island Shoal. So right in the middle of Long Island Sound, it gets two feet deep. So there are markers out there. So you, you really always have to pay attention. We had a member who was off New Haven said he was in 30 feet of water and two minutes later he hit a rock. Um, so it can come up fairly quickly. Yeah, it is the same thing in New Rochelle. Exactly. You were well, by the lighthouse where I had my problem. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. <laughs> so back to the sun. Um, um, Turn left onto Park Avenue. Back to this route. Um, the best thing once you let the computer um, create it is to just go over it, zoom in and, and go over and make sure it's not taking any place silly. And if you don't like where this is going here, you see I have a little plus sign. You just click that and it will create another waypoint for you and it'll recalculate your route. Uh, Mitch, it's uh, Combees here, if I may jump in. Uh, by the way, those numbers that you see on these charts, that's at low tide. So That, that is low tide. It, so yeah. if you are boating and you see the number, for example, says uh, whatever, 10, and you see your depth finder shows 17 feet, that's because you're high tide. Correct. So hello, can you hear me? Yes. So will would the route change if this was 
planned out during high tide? No. How high? Where it shows one and two, how high does it get? Does it, does it go up? So the tidal range in Long Island Sound is up to about seven, seven and a half feet. And the closer you get it to New York, it could get higher because the water is being funneled into a smaller area. But count on okay. safety. So the numbers here that say one at high tide, that could be eight feet on your um, depth finder. We don't want games like that played because, you know, you think it's seven feet feet here because of um, your depth finder telling you that. Typically in these low areas, there are rocks and other obstacles and you just take the extra five minutes and go around and head over to where right. you're going to. So, but the route, the route will give <laughs> us the, that way, regardless if it's high or low, it's going to take us around. Correct. It's always, the route's going to be based off these numbers. These are fixed numbers that, as Kambi said, that's uh, all uh, low tide numbers. Mitch, uh, why does the route take us all the way out and around? I mean, some of those numbers are in the 20s. Is it, and it looks like it's 35 minutes to get there. Could you, uh, could you tighten that up um, and, and shorten the 35 minutes to something less than that? You could. And um, so the computer is obviously going to take a shorter uh, or more conservative route. So I created this waypoint here. Let's say that you want it to go through there because it looks white and- um, We don't violate the uh, five foot uh, or whatever that minimum right. depth is. So you can see how the, the model changed for you and it's, it's going around that five foot area there, staying away mm -hmm. from this blue. Gets a little dicey down here. Those are rocks getting you close, but- And this is a low tide? And that's a low tide. <laughs> so- it's a, you're, you're better off at high tide to make that route. Gotcha. And is the application smart enough to know if it's high tide or low tide? Uh, yes, you are. Oh, great. <laughs> no, the application isn't. Uh, you're going to have to take that into consideration. Oh, shit. I'm saying you're the smart one there. So you're the computer. Mitch. Yes. Yeah, um, when you're when you're following this uh, this pink line, do you uh, do you have it? Uh, like, how do you know if you're not drifting off this line? Do you have a GPS? Are you working in conjunction with a GPS with this? Well, if you program this on the Garmin GPS or Simrad, or you brought this with you, you your boat would be basically a arrow, you know, moving around, and you can see like it on the line or not. Is, so, is it like an autopilot, or like I mean, am I doing a visual off this line, or is it? Am I going to be able to see my motion on the chart? You know what I mean? You will see your motion on the chart. It, it is visual. You can deviate from the chart and, and uh, go off here to the north or the south. Um, but you'll see your boat. If this cursor was your boat and you're headed back in, you could be doing one of these things. Right. Yeah. OK, so I could see myself if I'm on the line or not, like I'm, I'm going on the right route. Yeah, our boats do not have autopilot, which would follow that line no matter what's in front of you or above. No, I, I'm not saying that, but I can see, like, on a GPS, I'll be able to see the dot move, which is us moving in within that line. So I know that I'm I'm going that course, of, right? Correct. Okay, thanks. Not a problem. Um, one other thing, just for chart talk here, is if. All of a sudden you realize that, uh, wow, you know, I checked the weather again and the wind's coming out of the south and it's gonna be blowing into the into Kikini and this uh, windward side's gonna get too rough. You can easily change your route, but it's like clicking and dragging <coughs> this over. And let's say we wanna change our destination spot to there. Let go, it'll recalculate. And let me get rid of this waypoint. And so now it's created a new route. And so you drop anchor here, uh, nice and simple. And the island's now protecting you from the wind. Mitch, this is Nav. What's this app you're using? This is Navionics. Na is there an app for it or are you using this on a computer? Um, there is an app. It's uh, said in the beginning, it's like $15 to get. It's a great backup. Some of you know that the um, systems on the boat um, short out or break um now you have this in your back pocket and you're able to pull it up very quickly and it's just as good I, we have seen some differences in some of the charting that they show a rock in one system and not the other but that's not very typical all right 
I use a different app. That's what I was asking. Okay. And you can. Um, this, you just find this fairly simple. Um, um, excuse me, Mitch. Question on uh, Navionics. If I do, if I do a route at home on the computer, and of course it downloads to my phone, which has Navionics. There's no way to download it from the phone onto the Garmin or the Simrad. Is that correct? Uh, that's not totally true. We're going to hold another class on how to do that. It gets fairly technical. Um, whether you can download it to a SIM card and then the boat SD cards in the um, boat units have a, a slot so you can stick it in there and it'll upgrade. Since Navionics is owned by Garmin, they're getting better and better at making that more seamless. Okay, thank you. So um, that's um, Navionics and plotting a chart there, or course. Um, any other questions about locations or no-go zones? We don't want to restrict, we want you to enjoy boating. We don't want to restrict you and be too cumbersome with rules and regulations, but um, the numbers tell us what's going on. 90%, almost 90% of our damage is caused in this area here in Kikini Island. And then um, you, you folks who have reservations the next day are the recipients of the problem where we're going to have to move you to another boat or you lose your reservation because the boat's damaged. Okay, so I wanted to um, show you uh, some of the boats we have coming in, if you guys would like to see them. We've been... Um... Mitch, yes. sorry. Be... No problem. Just when we got cut off, this is Emre. I was about to ask a question and didn't get a chance to. So before moving on, um, these no-go zones that you've... Uh, informed us of and, and the reasons behind them, fully understand them, of course. Um, almost 90% of my boating last season was for fishing. And all the good fishing spots are in those no-go zones. Right. Is, is there a float plan or some, I don't know, um, alternative to actually still continue to be able to do those? Absolutely. Obviously checking weather and, and tides, etc. Yes. So um, we have many fisher people on, in the club. And if you would um, let the dock staff know um, beforehand that you want to be able to take a boat out, whether it's early or in or shallow water, and you want to go to, say, Penfield Reef, and you've charted out a course and um, basically created a flow plan that says, you know, I'm going to go, I'm a cognizant of the tide. Um, we don't have a problem with that. Our problems come with people transgressing shallow water, not thinking about what they're doing, not knowing what the tides are. So if you're going to tiptoe in, drop anchor to go black fishing, more power to you. I, we don't have a problem with that. Okay. want to make sure you Thank know what you're doing. Thank you for explaining that. And then I'm sure you'll communicate this to the doc staff as well, because last year when this was implemented uh, there were many times i just couldn't go where i wanted to go because it was a blanket statement of you can't go to these locations regardless of tide or float plan or yeah and as i said uh, we've had a lot of confusion miscommunication internally and with you folks and we're, that's why we're doing these okay thank you uh, hey, Mitch, this is Adam. Just a, a follow up to that. Um, just, you know, in reading the newsletters and everything uh, with regards to the no go zone. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, we can make a float plan, we get close to those no go zones, we anchor, we're fine. But if we happen to kind of go into that no go zone, it's registered on the GPS, we may even get that alarm that you mentioned, I come back, there's no damage to the boat, everything's all good. Um, Am I going to still get fined because the GPS showed that I was in that no-go zone? No, if you um, actually um, showed Liz that uh, you know, you're know you going to go fishing over in that area, you're more than likely going to set off the alarm. They're not going to be texting you uh, because they know you're going there. So okay. the doc, the senior dock masters get um, notification via text and they can see your tracks. Um, it's for those people who are just cruising around. They don't set up a game plan or a float plan where they want to go and next thing they run over execution rocks don't know it so that's what we're worried about all right thank you 
Mitch, while we're on the topic of float plans, can I make a quick note for everybody? When you're using Navionics, there is a way for you to download the plan that you make and save it to your computer and share it with us. And you all will get access to mine and David's email. I'm sure that David feels the same way about this that I do, that if you wanna send us a float plan um, and have us check it and either make recommendations or approve it and say, hey, this looks like this looks great or actually, you know, try going a different route. You're welcome to do that if you if you for your first few times or for your, all your outings, you're welcome to do that and share them with us. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. So um, if if this has been, besides being technically messed up, if this is <laughs> of help, um, we'd love to hear back from you folks as to other areas or things you're interested in. I know we're going to do some Zoom classes on where to go water skiing. Um, there's some places over in Long Island that are difficult but fun to go to to drop anchor. So we'll, we'll um, put on a couple of Zoom classes. These are being recorded, so you can refer to them later on at some point. And uh, again, questions about restaurants, things like that, we can, um, as the summer gets closer, we can start populating the uh, library with more fun places to go to. Outside of that, um, I was saying before, uh, this, my screen went blank, is that we purchased 15 boats for this coming season. Um, Bryant, who's here with me now, has, um, I believe, got seven of our older boats sold. So. Bye bye Saugatuck Express, which was our oldest boat in 2017. And the other um, seven boats, six, seven boats are all pretty much eight, 2018 models. Um, I'm not too sure how many people we have on board here, but uh, we can kind of hear back. We've, we've been pushing to sell the bay liners, and I think we're down to one remaining bay liner in the fleet for next year. So um, thank, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny how some people love that boat and uh, dock staff and a lot of other people yes, just love boat. Boat. you do love that boat yes why i don't mean that negatively <laughs> <laughs> sorry didn't mean to bark it's, easy. I'm, it's easier for me to control honestly for me i felt yeah but. yeah yeah come here Okay. Um, one of the questions has been coming up is whether or not we should be looking at more or getting a replacement style boat that's a deck boat, pontoon boat. Um, the problem is that those boats tend to be grounded when it gets wet, uh, windy out. And um, people get frustrated. And then once they go out, they find out why. They're great if you want to stay in the channel. <laughs> okay. So um, we're bringing on new models. We're, we're um, outsourcing or uh, no longer buying Rabalos and um, center consoles or chaparrales. We've been having major, major mechanical problems with those boats. We're replacing them with uh, two different brands, or actually three brands: uh, Sailfish, Cobias, and Tidewaters. And they all make, and uh, they all make. Um, Center consoles and bow riders. Uh, not a star in the top right hand corner is our newest boats. Looks like we're going to end up getting three of those. It's, um, it looks exactly like a chaparral. So um, that's all I have, unless you folks have any more questions. Mitch, um, how are you guys? How are you guys selling your boats? The ones that you are getting rid of? Are you posting them someplace? Um, go ahead. Uh, they're all on Boat Trader. So um, if you were to search for the Chaparral 25 foot boat, our listing would pop up. Um, as of today, we're pretty much done selling because with the market where it is right now and demand where it is, we can't find new boats anymore. Um, many of our manufacturers we deal with have entirely sold out of 2021 boats um, until late August. Um, at the earliest. So in Connecticut and New York, that doesn't do us much good. Now, the reason I was asking, I think it was last year or the year before um, I was speaking to you, Mitch, and I think you said that uh, uh, if any boats go up for sale, you actually, you guys offer it to the members first before it goes on, on the market. 
yeah, I believe it periodically we put it at the bottom of the email to say here's a link to um, the boats.com or um, boat trader. Um, and we haven't received very many um, responses from that because, uh, you know, the boat club's the solution, right? <laughs> So uh, the pricing of boats are extremely high, both used and um, they're difficult to get. So we're struggling with balancing, trying to keep the fleet new and current and also trying to get new boats in. So we ordered boats in September, October, and they're still looking at early summer, late spring delivery. So uh, you're, you're do, you, do we still have a place in Old Saybrook? Because I remember you opened that up last year and there was one boat. I, I tried to reserve a boat. Uh, I tried many times and I couldn't. And the one time I did, uh, it got canceled for whatever reason. But um, even when I was looking out three weeks out, it was always booked. You know, the, the last year was crazy. I mean, people, every day was a Saturday. Um, we had boats up in Connecticut, up in the Connecticut River for the two prior years, and it was they were 50% used. The jet boat that we had up in Old Saybrook this year was used every day except when people canceled for weather, um, and they were three to four weeks booked out. Um, and I'm hoping that's not the case going forward. That get it normalizes. Um, we're we're expecting the same thing. We're planning for the same problems this year. Um, with uh, demand and our only solutions really are to keep the boats floating. We've hired more mechanics. We have both uh, mechanics on staff and mechanics on call. Um, and our maintenance schedules are increased dramatically this year to keep the boats, uh, to pull them out and, at nighttime and get those things uh, oil changed and gear oil replaced and try to clean up those little things that break all the time, hinges, doors. So um, we, we still have a ratio of seven to one, which we had last year. Um, so that hasn't changed. And then we, the other big thing is we have three boats in the warehouse that we didn't have last year. So if a boat cannot be fixed at the dock, we do have a replace, three replacement boats for um, until we can fix it. So um, the, the, obviously this is like my fourth year being a member. Um, just uh, Something that comes to my mind, and I know it's a, it's a challenge as you running the business, uh, keeping that ratio seven to one, because of COVID last year, obviously a lot of people were laid off. I'm still laid off. So um, I, I think the situation may be a little bit better this year, but we're gonna probably run into the same problem. So having said that, you're gonna have a lot of people that have all this free time on their hand, uh, that are going to be constantly booking. And one of the challenges I had last year, I'm sure as many people did, it's like, especially on a weekend, like I was booking three weeks out. And then when the time came, either the weather was bad or somebody would wreck the boat. So now I had to wait like another three weeks to make another reservation. So I just didn't get to enjoy it. Just like many other members. Uh, is there a way you can overcome that? Keeping that ratio the same. Well, um, yeah, the if that makes the sense. factors that reduce availability are having too many members, um, people using the boats more than expected, which was fine as far as we're concerned. Um, what we can control is the ratio of members to boat and trying to keep the boats floating, as opposed to being out. I mentioned before that we had one point. Westport was down seven out of 10 boats. Um, it, we couldn't keep up with the damage, nor could we keep up with getting parts in. So another thing is we're ordering um, 15 lower units to have sitting in the warehouse all lined up and ready to go um, in, in defense of uh, damage. Last year, we had probably half that number, used it up in a month, and it was taking Yamaha three months to get you a new lower unit. So um, expectation is another thing. I mean, if you have to look at your membership plan and say that if you're a premier two member, you know, you're going to get out 12 to 15 times as expected, maybe more than that. But if you want to go out 20, 30 times, then you probably look, need to look at changing your membership plan. 
Hey, Mitch, what's this, Larry? What's your staffing outlook for this coming year in terms of turnover um, and, and hiring new people and replacing people that maybe you decided not to do, do this year versus last year? Um, well, uh, good questions. We're taking a different tactic. We've set up two general managers. Um, we haven't had these positions before. As we're getting bigger, for more hands-on management, uh, Liz is online. She'll be running Connecticut. And David Lahr um, from uh, Rye will be handling New Rochelle, the new club in Westchester County. They will manage the doc masters you tend to see, um, you know, the um, individuals, the, the college kids and the uh, younger adults who were there me meeting and greeting you. Um, we've been advertising for more doc masters. So it will probably be about the same um, with a boat club of 10 you're probably going to see three to four people at the dock periodically it overlaps and typically otherwise during downtimes two people um the dock masters coming we have a lot of dock masters coming back and some are not being requested to come back to be honest with you <laughs> can you comment on um uh fleet makeup bow rider versus center console 50-50, 60-40? Um, I can um, easily give that to you, but we have to make some determinations of what kind of boats are considered um, cruising boats. So as I'm looking at what you have on the screen and it looks like the Cobia is a walkthrough windshield as is the Nordic Star. Um, other than that, there are center consoles and of course the Eastern Islander. So are those right. the only two bow riders? Um, the bow, well, bow riders would be rinkers, uh, the leftover chaparrels, um, okay. the, really the, the dual consoles, the bottom right one that says the Cobia 24, that is a, that is a cruising boat, um, yeah. primarily for duplicating what uh, the chaparrels did, but can handle rougher waters than the, the chaparral did because it has a higher freeboard. But if we just look at center consoles being a, a true fishing boat, the fleet will be mixed uh, of probably 60, 40 cruising boats to 40% center console boats. Okay. Yeah, Mitch, it's Roy Abramowitz. I have a question. Sure, Roy. If my daughter, who's a college student, would want to work with you guys, uh, how do we go about doing that? I mean, are you looking for people? Uh, yeah, um, we have Doc Hands that, um, she's in college? Yes, yeah, she's in college. Okay, yeah, um, just, have her give me a call or send easier enough send the resume to me at mitch at carefreeboats.com okay thanks a lot appreciate it hey mitch uh, paul Zelinsky. i was wondering about sailboats you talked maybe about getting uh some in the past is that something that's going to happen um i hopefully i didn't say that you got me confused <laughs> <a little. laughs> i thought I, that you were considering it uh, I had a sailboat for maybe three days. No or... sailboats. Uh, maybe maybe you were just humoring me. Why? What's wrong with the sailboat? <laughs> I uh, yeah, I'm gonna no. have to go to another another club to to get my fix. Yeah, and there's a sailboat club, I believe, in Norwalk. I haven't looked yes. at it. And I think yes. out of the 500 boats that Carefree has in their fleet, I think there's probably five sailboats in the total fleet. Is that right? Yeah, it's um, it's just hard. I mean, power boats are difficult enough to find out what people want. Sailboats, I mean, there's so many options and sizes. And most people want to take the boat out for longer periods of time to go to Block Island. And sure. Um, so we, we just couldn't make the model work with sailboats. I'd rather give my money to you. Thank you. Because <laughs> we know where it goes after May, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, any, before we hang up, any suggestions for the next uh, location? Uh, somebody had mentioned that you guys are looking to open up uh, Long Island. Uh, we did uh, have one other individual open up uh, Port Washington, I believe. Um, I don't know if they have any boats in there yet, but uh, they are setting up a club. Um, right now, I don't want to get too far over our skis uh, with the new Rochelle opening up with the five clubs. We're going to try to expand up to 10 boats in each location and um, work on, you know, blocking and tackling right now, making sure the operations team is running smoothly and the boats stay in good working condition for you. So you have a total of how many boats right now? 
Uh, we'll have 42 in the water with three in the warehouse. By, by springtime when the club opens up? Uh, you, you, as you said, you've been here too long. You know what I have to answer that one. Um, <laughs> the manufacturers are promising me early delivery April in these boats. And you see my emails come out that I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for the, uh, the truck to bring them up. Um, so we plan on having 42 boats in the water, hopefully early summer. Unless they come back and say the manufacturers who make our windshields didn't deliver them, so we can't deliver you the boat. Um, we'll keep you posted on that. But I just talked to Brig two days ago, and they're promising our July boat to um, be here in April. So they're ahead of the game. I can't say that for everybody. How about uh, Candlewood Lake? You ever consider about uh, putting a, uh, a, a site up there? Yes, over and over again every year we've looked at it. And honestly, we ultimately made the decision last year not to go there because we don't think we can support a club of five boats because there's just so many rental organizations up there. Um, I hear it's pretty crowded. On the weekends, I'm sure. Uh, I've only been there during the week and it was really nice, but you're right, it's crazy on the weekends. Yeah, and it's, um, it would be nice, honestly, but I think the lakes just need to be bigger, like George, Winnipesaukee. Sure, yeah. Yes, Roy, uh, I have a question. Sure. The two, 2021 Eastern Islander, does it, it looks like it has a downstairs. Is there a downstairs with like a, a lounge? Um, it, it's a V-berth down below. Um, two people can spend a, a weekend on it. Uh, they better like each other. Uh, <laughs> It does have a, a head in there also. Um, that boat that you're seeing right there is actually floating in the Bridgeport Harbor. I just picked it up a couple of days ago. We put on an air conditioning and heating system. So um, nice. it's shore power driven. So you can um, take it overnight. Um, the boats, you know, it's not a speed boat. It probably cruises around, you know, high 20s, low 30s. My wife will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Why, who's she going with? <laughs> Let's not go to him. <laughs> hey, Mitch, Mitch, this call has given us uh, another uh, destination, Kokini, to go to safely. Uh, maybe the next Zoom call, maybe we can go to two or three locations, maybe one or two on Long Island, one or two on the Connecticut, New York side, and just give people the um, same kind of information. And maybe, you know, you go to whatever restaurant in Huntington or Northport or, or you wanna go swimming, you go to Eaton's Neck. Maybe we could um, put some of that information out for the members. I'd uh, love to. And, and since from a guy who's been, gone out with us, how many times on a boat? Just under, <laughs> just under 200 times, Larry? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure you can provide me with a couple of locations. <laughs> we'll do. Okay, thank you. Um, Mitch, the stereo, the stereo systems on these boats, uh, a lot of them, when they were going out, like they would stay out the whole season. Are they really difficult to fix when stereo goes out? No, they're actually not. But um, I, the problem with these boat builders, they're putting the stereo power heads down behind the helm at the floor level and um, they get wet and they, they go out. Um, we can easily replace them. The problem has been getting them last year. So as I said, we have mechanics. They're actually rewiring most of the stereo power heads and moving them higher up. Doesn't mean they're not gonna get wet periodically, but we're trying to uh, deal with what we have and hide them. We can't cover them because they need air to uh, circulate through them to stay cool. So they don't, because um, they draw a lot of heat. So we are trying to move them and, and keep them out of the way of the water and cleaning and things like that. Mystic would be a good place, so you could go down to the Hamptons and go fishing off of Block Island. Too far. And we can still. <laughs> Hello. We can still get. Yeah, we can still get um, training whenever we want if we just schedule them. Um, depending upon what you want. So, um, if are you can't tell who this is. Are you new to the club? No, I've been here. This is um. I'm going into the third year with you guys, but there's, you know, 
I need some brushing up, you know, anchoring. I need to know a little bit more about that part. Okay, um, so we're going to handle that a couple ways. We are preparing a lot of videos and, and that we're just going to leave on on the website so you can just go to and look up anchoring and, um, and see how it's done. If you still need some help, your doc master, um, Liz and David, are great to help you out right there at the dock. Best thing to do, honestly, is to call them up and arrange a time to meet for an hour to go over something like that. Okay. Because I remember there was a, a, a captain, I can't remember his name. I'm, I'm out of um, Rye. So is, they, is that guy still on there or now we're just gonna use the doc master? Um, well, David's still the senior there. Um, we've had a few people there. Um, Patrick was the one you mentioned. I don't remember I that. I think so. Yeah, there's a Patrick in Stanford. Um, Eli, um, young kid, tall, skinny. Worked a lot. Yeah, he's nice. <laughs> but yeah, just call okay. up and ask, and we can do it a number of ways. You can do drop anchors right there in the in the marina. Um, you can go out into the uh, flats and do it. Or okay. Thanks. Sure. Mitch, have the computers been programmed for routes throughout the sound, or just the no-go zones? Um, actually, you won't see the no-go zone on the computers. It's a uh, it's a signal that is transmitted from the boat to um, to Siren Marine, which we then get on our um, our screens back in the office. Um, but the problem with the um, we used to try to put charts or routes onto the GPSs, but people would go in there and um, move them around and delete them. So your best thing to do is create a, a SIM card um, with your routes on them and this okay. SD card and just hold on to them and bring them with you. Stick them in, it'll be there for you. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Again, when we do the how to convert from Navionics to uh, a Garmin, your routes will talk about how to uh, hold on to your card and program it. How much the dock master is alerted when someone goes in the no go zone? Yes. Well, you are? Um, right now, the seniors, David, Liz, and I will get a text message. And then we fight amongst ourselves who to, to call you up to okay. you come back. <laughs> Does it tell you exactly where the person is or just sends you the signal saying that they went to a no-go zone? Well, um, out of each location, we have a drone with a camera, so it flies out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, it'll, it'll, um, it'll show up like your boat will show up on your GPS screen. So we'll see a picture of where you are um, we may hesitate a bit before we do anything because we can see you um, um, turning around or slowing down or dropping anchor, or we know that you're fishing. So it's, it's a text message that comes to us, and you will know because there's an alarm on the boat that'll go off and stay on until um, you exit, unless we turn it off because we know you're headed there to go fishing or something like that. Hey, man, uh, when you showed the Charles Island no go zone, it was like in a uh, red uh, font or it was it was uh, <clears throat> it was colored out red. Are all the no zone areas colored out red? No, that was just for um, exhibit only. I, it's a you won't see it on the boat GPS. They haven't come up with that technology to show it there. Um, it does show up on our laptops because we have to design them. It's pretty much going to follow the five water um, low mark contour line. So if we just put in that route, what you're saying is we'll never go through a no go zone. No, you will. You have the ability to do it. Um, no, if we over, but if we override what the uh, route gives us, we can go anywhere, I guess. But what you're saying is when you calculate the to and from like you did earlier and it took us around that island, which we never got close to that one or two feet inside of five feet. Um, are all those areas so that that application would always take us away from those low water levels? But as the captain of the boat, you can deviate from that route and drive the boat any place you want. 
So it's but not if you deviate, that's where we get some text message or you or somebody else calls us, it lets us know where we're uh, yeah, you, you get an audible alarm on the boats. Hopefully that you realize that you didn't expect to deviate into that direction. Then you just follow your tracks back out again and okay. you're fine. And the alarm goes off. So the alarm cannot be turned off by, by the captain. It has to be turned off by you guys. Correct. Well, yeah, um, sorry. If you turn around and go out, it'll turn off. Kind of like on a golf cart on a golf course if you get too close to the green. There you go. Thank you. Sure. I think we're about ready to lose um, connection here again. Um, so I think we need to wrap it up. Um, got probably about two minutes left. Anything else? Very beneficial as always, Mitch. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Enjoy, Thank you. Enjoy the Bye. tomorrow. Thank you, Mitch. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.